Yo, welcome back everybody to a brand new video here on the second channel and today it is time to do some meta predictions for San Antonio. San Antonio Regionals is tomorrow. I'm going to be there. I cannot wait. It is the largest regional of all time and we're going to go through each and every potential deck right now that I think will perform well and I'm just going to make my general predictions for this tournament. Um, I will be in attendance so I hope that my predictions are fairly accurate because I kind of need them to be to be honest with you but uh yeah, before we get the video, if y'all are new here to the second channel, make sure to subscribe down below. We're on the road to 10,000 subs, and leave a like on the video if you want to enjoy. But let me know in the comments below your predictions for San Antonio and down below, too. I'd be very interested to hear what you also might think might go down in San Antonio in terms of, like, what deck's going to win and all that good stuff. Starting things off, we have Maridon. So in my tier list in top 5 video, or top 10 video, I said that the best decks... Were, well, I mean, there's three best decks, right? There was Maridon, there was Guardi, and there's Charizard. Those are like the three big decks right now. I do think Maridon is in a very good spot. I think that it is probably going to be the most popular deck in the tournament. It's going to be the most played. I don't think Maridon is going to win the tournament. Um, I think we'll probably see at least one Maridon in top eight. But I definitely think that Maridon is in a decent spot. I mean, a lot of people now have a good deck to net deck off of with the second place list from a Stukart. But I don't think Maridon's going to win. I think there'll be one in top eight. I also expect it to be the most played deck. And then we got Charizard. Now, Charizard will probably be the second most played deck um, because it's Charizard. People love themselves some Charizard. So, best way to play Charizard right now is with Rodom and Pidgeot. I think that's going to stay the same for San Antonio. I don't think there's a reason to play Bibarel over Pidgeot right now. But I do think that Charizard is going to be popular. It's probably going to be the second most played deck. There even is a world where it is the most played deck, which we'll have to see on that. Um, but yeah, I definitely think that Charizard is good. Will it win the tournament, though? Because if we're thinking about it, the most popular decks are going to be Maridon. We're seeing a bit of a research in Lost Box. Charizard is a deck that could easily win the tournament. It, it could win San Antonio. There is a world where maybe we see Charizard take down San Antonio, but I'm going to say that's probably unlikely, but it could happen for sure. Um, depends on how the meta shapes going into day two. Um, there is Bibrelzard, which still exists too. I do want to briefly mention Bibzard here. It's the other way to play Charizard EX that's fairly popular. I do think Pidgeot's still better. The problem with the Bibrel build is you have a pretty weaker matchup in a Guardi, um, which I don't think you want to take a bad matchup to. Guardi's still going to be popular, in my opinion. And I think Pidgeot's Zard is just overall the better deck. The Bibrel deck does help against Path, though. And there is probably going to be an uptick in Path. So it's Maridon plays it. Um... Mew plays it. Well, I mean, Charizard should already be Mew, but you get my point, right? Path is popular, so there's a reason to want to play um, Bibarel. But Pidgeot is a lot stronger, but Bibarel definitely does help in Path and stuff. But I do think Pidgeot Zard is going to be popular. But since both these two Charizard decks exist, there's a world where we see both of them be uh, pretty popular. And it combines the total for Charizard's popularity. Of course, we got guardy here guardy is still in a great spot heading into san antonio i do think it's still one of the top three decks if there's any deck that has a good chance of winning the tournament i think guardy's got the best chance of winning the tournament it just seems like it can really beat anything under the right circumstances and i think that is very true for guardy like if maridon's not getting turn one iron hands guardy can be maridon still fairly easily i mean it could still keep up in the charizard matchup i think i think guardy's still in a fantastic spot heading in to san antonio and i think that it is the deck that could win the tournament. If there's any deck that has a good chance of winning, it's probably Gardevoir. Probably going to be one in top eight, 100%. Um, next up is Rapid Strike. So Rapid Strike, I think, is a very good call for this tournament. It seems like it's just an insane deck. I mean, when you look at the meta spread, like how good it is against Lost Zone variants, Charizard, Maridon, Guardi, even like other matchups like Entei Valiant are just like pretty free for this deck. It does struggle against Mew and Snorlax, but... Those aren't decks that I think you have to worry about as much, in my opinion. Rapid Strike and Talion, I don't think can win the tournament, but I think we'll maybe see one outside of top eight. I don't think we'll see Rapid Strike in top eight, but outside of the top eight, maybe somewhere in the top 16, it's probably going to see Rapid Strike. It is a very good call for the tourney, but I think someone's going to have a good run with Rapid Strike, and their run isn't going to get them into top eight because Rapid Strike either hit bad matchups or they just didn't have very good draws in a certain match. That's ultimately the deck's downside. Same thing with Tina. Basically, just kind of bump the same thing for Tina. Tina seems like an ins it's an insane deck for this tournament. It seems like it has an insane matchup spread, but it might fall victim, like how Rapid Strike can fall victim to some bad draws. I don't think Tina's going to win the tournament. Maybe we'll see one in top eight. I think Tina has a higher chance of making top eight over Rapid Strike, but I think that Tina 
is probably going to be somewhere in top 16 at the very least. Maybe top 8, but I'm going to say top 16. Uh, Mew. So Mew's definitely looking decent for this tournament. It's got good matchups right now. I think your scariest matchup is going to be Charizard, obviously, and maybe Gardevoir. Outside of that, I think Mew's not a bad deck. Um, Spirit Tomb is still out there, and people might tech a Spirit Tomb in their deck. You never know. I think DT Mew is a risky play. Like, if I'm playing Mew, I'm probably not playing DT Mew. There is too much Spirit Tomb in the format right now. Um, or at least there should be enough Spirit Tomb to me, for me to be scared off. I mean, if DT Mew just runs hot and doesn't hit a single Spirit Tomb, the deck's pretty insane. I think it has a better chance at beating Charizard than Fusion Mew, but DT Mew is a bit riskier to play overall, but it is still a strong deck. And Mew's always a deck that somehow makes it top 8. We're probably going to see one Mew in top 8, whether it's Fusion or, of course, yeah, well, DT or Fusion, I should say. Um, yeah, I do think Fusion Mew is still in a good spot right now. It does have a worse Charizard matchup, but it offsets it by having a better time into Spirit Tomb. And then you got you get access to Meloetta, which is really strong right now. So there's a world where we see Mew in top eight. Mew is just one of those decks that just always makes it into the top eight of a tournament. There's a good chance it can get top eight. Mew maybe could win the tournament. It depends on how much Charizard is in the top eight. But there's even a world where Mew could take down the tournament. It definitely feels like it could be a tourney winning deck. But, I mean, just because Mew just always somehow gets top eight of these tournaments, whether or not there's a big dark Pokemon or big threat in the format, it seems like Mew always just squeaks into top eight somehow some way. And that might happen again at this tournament we'll have to see antivalian i think is one of the like I, I do feel like it is a a dark horse deck where there's a chance it can get into top eight it doesn't feel like a deck that could make top eight right now i think the deck is uh, slipping a little bit i think rapid strike is just a better version of the deck but the deck is still strong in my opinion i don't think it's a bad deck it's definitely a dark horse deck where there's a world where this even could get top eight too there is a world where we do see an antivalian deck inside of the top eight of this tournament it could happen not saying it it won't it definitely could happen so keep your eye out on that it's a dark horse deck there's like a chance in getting a top eight i don't know if it will like maybe we'll see it get top 32 at the highest maybe a top 16 at best but i definitely think it's a deck that like it's a dark horse deck like there is a world where it can get a top eight i don't know if it will but we'll see on that but yeah next up is of course the sables art deck now this deck does look decent for this tournament because it just came off of a huge win i think the fact that it did just win a major regionals does mean it is going to still be popular for this tournament though i do think people are going to start playing more jirachi i think jirachi is going to be a bit of a bigger presence which isn't great for this deck lost city is another card this deck has to be careful of and lost city could be popular and with how popular Maridon's probably going to be that is a bit scary for this deck right Maridon is supposed to be a fairly popular deck this tournament i think it might be the most played deck and that's a matchup where you really got to rely on some luck to go your way like you have to make sure you're hitting the charizard combo at the right moment because if you let that iron hands take too many prizes the game's just over iron hands is just going to destroy you and you're going to lose very quickly and i think that we're going to see something like that happen to Sables Art players. I think the deck is still good for the tournament. I think it's not a bad play whatsoever with like how popular Charizard and Guardi will be. It doesn't seem like a bad play when you have TM Devolution. But I do think that this deck is risky. If Jirachi sees an uptick in play, it's not going to be great for the deck. And Iron Hands can still be a bit of an issue if you can't pull off Charizard. But I think we'll see at least a Sables Art in top 16. Um, it seems like it's still the best way to play the Lost Zone right now, even going into this tournament, coming off of the win. Um, there are some other Lost Zone decks I wanted to mention. Uh, we do have Dragonite. Dragonite Lost Zone, like Turbo Dragonite, like the original like Turbo Lost Zone deck, has been doing decent in like player uh, League Cups and stuff. I almost said Players Cup, bro. That's pff, two years away or two years ago. Yeah, wow. But time goes by. Yeah, Dragonite's been like slowly coming back into the into the meta with Lost Zone variants playing it. And I think that the Lost Zone Dragonite deck is definitely kind of primed to have a good run in a tournament to like revive itself. Dragonite's still a really strong card. I mean, it does a lot of damage. Um, it is risky to play in a meta with like Entei Valiant and stuff where it's like it's your best attacker into the Entei and you have to like basically damage your own comfies for Tachyon Bits. Doesn't seem like a great idea. I think maybe if you're playing Dragonite, you probably have to play Jirachi so you can't get Yoga Looped, um, in my opinion. Just because if Dragonite's your best attacker to deal with Entei, you probably want to play at least a Jirachi so you can't get Yoga Looped. But either way, I do think that the uh, the Turbo Dragonite Lost Zone deck is prime to make a comeback. Whether or not you're playing it with Raikou in hands or you're playing it with Roaring Moon and Dragonite, I do think that Dragonite in Lost Zone is prime to come back. And I think somebody's going to have a good enough run with it, maybe even get top 16, maybe even top 8. And then, of course, Snorlax, good old faithful Snorlax. So, yeah, 
everyone loves Snorlax, and it does feel like the deck is falling off a little bit. People are teching for it a bit more now. People have kind of figured out how the matchups play out for most of their decks. Like, if you're going to this tournament and you haven't really practiced or you don't really know your game plan against Snorlax, I would probably say maybe try to put some reps in before the tournament to do that. Um, yeah, Snorlax is a deck that I think 100% can make top 16. I don't think it'll make top 8 again. I don't think we're going to see Snorlax in top 8 at San Antonio. But with how popular Charizard is going to be, there is an opportunity for that to happen. But I do think there will be at least one, maybe even two Snorlax players that do really well in the tournament because they just hit a ton of Charizard. And especially when this is like a lot of people's first regionals, like imagine your first regional ever, you're playing Charizard or you're playing, I don't know, Maridon, just any deck that like is shaky against Snorlax. And then your opponent flips over the Snorlax. You're just like, round wide hit Snorlax. That just happens. See, I feel bad for the people that are going to have to hit Snorlax in this tournament if it's their first tournament and they're not really going to know what to do against it. But yeah, there's always going to be that one Snorlax player that's going to run hot, whether or not the deck is falling off or not. I think it will happen. Um, 100%. Probably not get top eight again, though. Uh, we do have the uh, Super Effective Glasses Lost Zone deck from two cart that got top four a really cool archetype is it a one trick pony deck or is it a deck that has legs i think it's not a bad deck i mean the tropius super effective glasses combo could still be good into the charizard and specifically because charizard is popular in san antonio good chance this deck could also be good of course iron hands and moltres are pretty cool having the split dark pokemon isn't bad considering we're probably going to see more gardevoir and potentially even more Mew, right? So there's a world where just having dark Pokemon right now is just going to be really good. But I can see the Super Effective Glasses Lost on deck doing well. Maybe somebody's going to come up with a different version of it. Like, they're going to add different cards. I've heard some rumors of, like, Hoopa EX being really good in a in a deck like this because you can use Hoopa as a fighting attacker over the Minior. Um, so there's definitely room for, like, different attackers and tech cards that this deck could play. And I, I definitely can see somebody having a deep run with a modified version of a, of a deck like this in Stuttgart, it's definitely possible. Tord's Lost Zone deck is definitely, it feels like an anomaly. Only Tord could do so well with a deck this crazy, but honestly, I don't think the deck is bad. I think if you're already somebody who's played a lot of Lost Zone and somebody who's put in, you know, a lot of time in the Lost Zone engine, I think that this is just a natural deck for a lot of people to pick up who already played a ton of Lost Box before. Like, it's not really that different. Like, kind of is. I mean, the Tina's a little weird and obviously there's, like, a lot of things going on, but it's not really that, like, hard to play if you already know how to play Lost Zone correctly. I mean, your goal is to really sometimes just win with Kyogre. And with all the Maridon going around, hey, man, this deck should be able to just beat Maridon. You have Tina which is good in that matchup. You have Kyogre. Like, the, the Maraida matchup seems like if everything goes your way, the matchup should be a breeze for this deck. And somebody could have a deep run. There's definitely a world where we're going to see somebody make a deep run with a Kyogre-style deck. Maybe not the Tord deck, but some sort of version of a Kyogre deck could have a deep run in San Antonio. Then we have the Palkia deck. I'm a fan of this deck. I think it's a really cool deck that kind of seems like it's a little underexplored and underappreciated. The deck's surprisingly really strong. Now... It does struggle in a Charizard. I think Guardi's 50-50. It really can come down to the Clone Cross Switcher, but I would like to see somebody have a good run with Palkia. A top, this definitely feels like a deck that can get, like, top 32. Maybe not top 8. I mean, I'd like to be proven wrong, but this feels like somebody can make a top 32 run. I think we'll see another Palkia deck do pretty well this tournament. Maybe get top 32. Maybe we'll even see Palkia on stream day one of San Antonio. Those are those are my predictions. We're going to see Palkia get top 32. Somebody's going to be on stream with it in, the, in day one of San Antonio, but I'm a big fan of this deck. I think it's really cool. I think that if somebody is to kind of work on the list a little bit to fix the Charizard matchup, I think that's a big deal. Maybe even, like, figure out different ways to approach matchups. I think this deck could have room for definitely more ideal cards. Something like maybe even Lost City could be good in here. I really like the idea of Lost City in this deck. So, I don't know. There's a lot of improvements the deck could have made to it. And I think it is a deck that has to evolve to do well. But, like I said, Palkia could definitely get top 32 and maybe will be on stream. Shen Pao... So, <laughs> Shen Pao's weird. Everyone's, like, said this deck is dead. Okay, I don't think the deck is dead. I actually think it's not the worst deck you could play. So, if you threw a deck at me, you were like, okay, pick a deck, and Shen Pao was on that list full of other decks that are a little mid, I would still probably pick Shen Pao because it's still a strong deck, and we have our, like, Shen Pao stands in the, form in the format that will continuously play this deck to regional, and I'm sure that will happen again. Like, we didn't see Shen Pao Day 2 at Stuttgart. I think we'll see in Day 2 San Antonio. But I don't think we're going to see Shen Pao get any higher than maybe a top 32 at best. This is another deck that will probably close off at a top 32 run. I think the deck has fallen off a lot. And with its inconsistencies, it's a little scary. But who knows? Shen Pao could end up doing pretty good this tournament. And we might see one in top 32. I think top 32 is maybe the, the most generous place when I'll give a Shen Pao deck. Maybe top 16. But at best, I would say top 32. But we'll have to see. Because I don't think there's going to be much Shen Pao in the tournament. That's the problem. Or much in day two even. But there will be a few big players who probably play it once again and have a good run with it. 
Um, Roaring Moon is another deck that's obviously not like the greatest, but it's one that's had some okay placements outside of the top eight recently at these European tournaments. And I think people are kind of ignoring that and like just like, well, it's not getting top eight. It's better in the Lost Zone. Who cares about Turbo Roaring Moon? But Turbo Roaring Moon has been getting okay-ish placements outside of the top eight, and that is a big deal for the deck in my opinion. It's definitely a deck that has the potential to creep in. Maybe not get top eight. I mean, it almost got top eight in Stuttgart, obviously. It got ninth place, but I don't know if I get top eight. Maybe we'll see one in top 32. It seems like people have kind of figured out an okay 60 for the deck, or the, at least they know a decent build the deck. I mean, you could probably net deck this ninth place build from Stuttgart and still do well with it. So yeah, maybe we'll see like a Roy Moon in maybe top 32. Um, Cloth is funny. I don't even hate Cloth for this tournament. I don't think it's the worst deck you could play in this tournament. It's got a good Maridon's got a good Charizard matchup. It's got good matchups across the board. The problem is it's a very hit or miss deck. You have to hit the right matchups for the deck to do well. If you hit the bad matchups, the deck's going to flop. Like if you're hitting all your bad matchups, you're hitting Guardies, you're hitting probably even Lost Zone, to be honest, even with Jirachi, it's still sketchy. Like if you're just hitting bad matchups, the deck's probably not going to have a good run. But if you're hitting good matchups, you're hitting Maridons and Zards, which are you know, going to be popular for this tournament. Again, both those two decks have the potential to be the most played decks in the tournament. It's a good reason to run Cloth. There's going to be Cloth in day two. I don't know if it'll get higher than a top 64 placement. I doubt we'll see one in top 16. I mean, the wild card would be to put this in top eight or top 16. But I don't know if we're going to see it go that far. But with how much Maridon and Zarda is going to be in this tournament, there's a good chance somebody's just going to have a good run to get day two of the deck. Um, maybe even be on stream day one. There's, there's another prediction. Maybe Cloth will get on stream on in the day one of the tournament. It'd be cool to see. All right, Arc Piles. Now, as an Arc enthusiast myself, I think Arc Piles are actually on the cusp of coming back in the meta. Now, yes, Arc has a bad matchup against Tina and Maridon. Those two matchups are tricky. But with how Arc plays, with you know, it's a Judge Path deck. You have room for different attackers. I think it, Arc Pile is destined to come back. I don't think it's Arc Dura, because I think Arc Dura is just extinct. I don't think it's an Arc Umbreon deck. I think it's more or less going to be some kind of Arc Giratina pile, like maybe Arc Tina Superior, maybe Arc Tina Flying Pikachu, maybe Arc Tina with like a fighting attacker like Rapishek Urshifu or Santa Conda or Machamp or Lycanroc VMAX, something like that. Arc piles actually seem like they could come back. Like Arc doesn't have a bad Zard matchup. Arc doesn't have a bad um, Lost Zone matchup. That's like the big thing. With Lost Zone or Lost Box, I should say, coming back into the format, that's a really good thing for Arc Piles. Arc Piles have always had a good Lost Box matchups, in my opinion, and this is one of the reasons why I think an Arc Pile deck is bound to come back. I mean, this deck got top 32 at LAIC, and that LAIC was a lot different. Like, the meta was different, and Arc Piles definitely could come back. Um, even, like, your Guardi matchup's, like, not that bad, because you do have, you know, the Path and stuff and Lost City, and you have Judge and Path. Like, Arc is just good, and I would like to see an Arc Pile do well. I'm a huge fan of it. I might even test one myself. Like, I'm not—I don't know if I'd play an Arc Pile, but I might test one, because who knows? The deck seems good. Like, it seems like Arc—if it's gonna come back, an Arc Pile might come back this weekend. It's gotta be some kind of Judge Path deck over, you know, Duraludon or— you know, Vulpix, whatever. I think it has to be, like, a Judge Path build with, like, a beat stick like Tina, but I think Ark's actually not in the worst spot right now, ironically enough. Um, Lugia is another deck that kind of feels like it's wavering. It's it, it, Lugia is falling off 100%. Like, I think Lugia is falling off, but I do think that Lugia is in a spot right now where it is definitely going to make a day two. I think we'll see at least one or two Lugia in day two. Now, there is the, the best way to play, I think, is, like, the Vessel build, though I do think Single Strike is kind of underrated right now, though Single Strike does have a pretty rough Charizard matchup, even if you were to play Cobalion. There is some debate over how you can build a Lugia deck, though, like, going into this meta. Like, you could obviously, like, I think you're playing Lugia, you probably have to play Dunsparce, but I don't know, Lugia with, like, TM Devo doesn't sound bad. I, I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm, I'm out here cooking, but I definitely think we might see some kind of Lugia deck in day two. Maybe top 64. Lugia is a deck that could get top 64, maybe even higher. Who knows? If somebody, like, does really well with, like, an insane Lugia 60 and, like, just farms everyone, there could even be one in top eight. That's my wild card. Maybe a Lugia in top eight. Lost on Charizard did get top eight at Stuttgart. This is definitely the, the least popular Charizard deck right now, but I think that it is primed to have maybe another good run. I think somebody's going to play it and get day two with it. I don't know if they'll get any higher than maybe like a top 16, top 32 placement, but it is coming off a top eight. We do have a decent 60 here to copy. If I were to play Lost Art, I would probably cut the Sableye though, because like, this is going to be too much Jirachi. Like, I think all the Lost Zone decks are going to be cutting down on Sableye. Like, I think Sableye is actually falling off right now because of the win it got in Stuttgart, and I think Jirachi is just going to be super popular this weekend. I just don't know if Sableye is in a good spot. Like, Sableye is falling off right now, but I do think that Lost Art could have a bit of a run due to its 
you know, top eight placement. It's two cards. Somebody's going to pick it up and play it because one, it's Charizard, and two, it's, it's a cool way to play it. It's not the Pidgey build. The problem is you do have a bit of a weaker engine with the Comfies, and you're not as consistent as Pidgeot or even Bibberol, but you do have better attackers like Cram. You can play your Ninja, and if you choose to keep the Sableye in your deck, you're probably okay. But again, with all the Jirachi going around, it's, it's not a good idea. But I'm just going to say it. Sableye could still stay in the deck if you want, and you have all these really cool attackers. So I don't know, man. Lost Art could be, could be okay. Now, Peony Maridon. Now, this is kind of a meme, and I don't know if this deck is very good right now, but I think we'll see Peony Maridon in day two. Um, some people do play it, and it has had some performances. I mean, this is a build here that did pretty good in Stukart, and who knows? Maybe we'll see somebody do well with Peony Maridon. I don't think it's like a deck that can ever get top eight. It feels like you just got to run Blazing Hot, and you're probably going to get, you know, run out of gas eventually. But it is a deck that maybe could make it into day two. We'll probably see a couple of these in day two, maybe... Top 64 placement is the most I'll give a, a, a Peony Maridon deck. Um, Lost on Gucci is another deck that's kind of slept on right now, like much like Lugia and Arc Piles. It's a deck from the previous format that maybe could come back in some way, shape, or form. I think the idea is, is that the deck has inherent strength with Gudra being really strong right now into some of the top decks. You still have stuff like Zamazenta, which isn't a bad one prize attacker. Um, you probably need to figure out how to counter Iron Hands a little bit better because I don't think Zamazenta is a best, the best option because obviously it just gets – you can't one off the hand. So you maybe have to figure something out on that front. But I do think that Lost Gudra is a deck that maybe could come back into the meta. Somebody could get day two with it. Somebody could have like a deep top 64, top 32 run with Lost Gudra. Hey, man, all you Lost Gudra believers out there, just saying, it's definitely a deck that – Somebody might have a good run with in San Antonio. And it is like the largest region of all time. Keep in mind, a lot of these like fringe, fringe decks that – have been slept on like Ark and Lugia and Guja. These are all decks that in a in a tournament this massive, somebody can have a good run with it. Like it's very possible for that to happen in a tournament this large. And then of course we got Vent Ante Valiant. So this deck's been getting weird, like actually weirdly good placements in the European regionals. I think this deck got like top sixteen or top thirty two at Stuttgart. It had a good run in Stuttgart, is what I'm trying to say. Is it underrated or is it bad? Considering it's actually getting okay placements, and actually doesn't even seem like a terrible deck for um, San Antonio. Kind of much like how Rapid Strike is, like, very strong for the tournament. This is, like, kind of the, the wish, the diet Rapid Strike deck, but it does still kind of carry over what Rapid Strike does. You got the Urshifu, so you probably have a good Maridon matchup. You have De-Evolution. You have damage spread potential. You know, if if you're really, like, I think this is a deck that honestly might be even harder to play than the normal Rapid Strike deck. I think Ente Ursh or Valiant Urshifu, sorry, could be a deck that somebody could have a good run with. This might be not this might not be like a, a coincidence or a one time thing we saw in Europe. Somebody might do well with this deck. It actually doesn't seem terrible for this tournament. Like specifically for San Antonio, this deck does not feel like it's a bad deck at all. And then finally, my personal pick is Zorobox. I want to see somebody make day two with Zorobox. I'm a big fan of the deck. Going into Stuttgart, I actually don't think Zorobox is a terrible deck. Like, as long as you can come up with a good 60 that is consistent and can consistently counter Iron Hands. Because a lot of my losses with Zorobox have been because of cards like Iron Hands. So I've lost games because the opponent goes hands turn one. And due to the deck not really being consistent enough, I'm not able to respond in time with my Cleaver. Though if you do draw the nuts and respond with Cleaver, you're chilling. Though, to be fair, this could be a better best of one deck than a best of three deck in all honesty. But as somebody who's a huge Zorobox enthusiast, I want to see somebody make day two of it. When I do a video on Tuesday or Monday, looking at every single day, well, probably not Monday, but Tuesday. Whenever whenever I do my video looking at every single deck that got day two at San Antonio, I'm hoping to at least see one Zorobox in day two. Big Zorobox stand over here. And to be honest... It doesn't seem like a bad play for this tournament. I mean, you got Jolteon, you got Scovillain for Charizard, you have Cleaver for Maridon, you have Scizor, which is just a great attacker. Your Lost Zone matchup's not bad anymore. Now that you have Manaphy and Jirachi, you actually have an okay matchup in a Lost Box. If you're just attacking with, like, Cleavers and stuff and Scizor, it's kind of tough for Lost Box to keep up. And a lot of the time, they're too on you. And with Jirachi and Manaphy, what are they going to do? Like, again, the problem with this deck, ultimately, is how bricky it feels. Like, it sometimes has really bad bricks and i think that's the issue like your turn one and turn twos are very shaky once you probably get past like turn three and you're you're getting the flow going the deck is pretty good and i think that's big now stuff like avery and guardy is gonna be a little scary like if you're hitting a lot of guardy like guardy's not really a bad matchup in theory like you do have a good guardy matchup you got slow bro you got Mightyana, you got scissor all are really good in that matchup the problem is they have avery which makes things awkward they have screamtail they can pick off your curlias with Cresselia and screamtail it's not great but it's okay. It's In theory, it's good. You have answers to it. It is tricky, though. But I want to see a Zorobox in day two. Those are my predictions. Yeah, if any deck's going to win 
Maybe it could be Charizard or Guardi. Guardi does have the best chance of winning the tournament in hindsight and in theory, but we'll have to see where it all goes. Again, those are all my predictions for the San Antonio Regionals. I cannot wait. Again, I'm going to be in attendance, so hopefully I see some of y'all at San Antonio. And that'll be for me. Hope you enjoyed the video here on the second channel. Let me know what your predictions for San Antonio are down in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. Thanks for watching. Check out Car Kevin down below. Use Call the F, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, hope to see some of y'all in San Antonio. Don't be afraid to come up and say hi. By the time this goes up, I think I'll probably be at the venue for checking, probably doing some shopping, maybe some testing, stuff like that. So hope to see some of y'all there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all in another video. Bye-bye.